In this video, we're going to talk about the properties of tangent as it relates to circles. So the first thing that you want to know is theorems and postulates and that are actually given in math. So like one thing you want to know is tangent. So for something to be tangent, it's either a line or a segment that touches the edge of the circle at exactly one point. So what I just highlighted is an example of tangent. There's also another segment here that touches at exactly one point on the edge of the segment. That's also a tangent line. So there's a property that says that if a line is tangent to a circle, then it's perpendicular to the radius. So if I look at the radius, which is notated from the center to the edge of the circle, that segment is considered the radius. And what just happened is the radius and the tangent created a 90 degree angle. It made it's perpendicular. The same is the, happens if I look at the radius from C to D. It also did the exact same thing for that tangent line. It created a perpendicular or right angle. So that's a theorem that you definitely want to know. You also want to know the theorem that if you have two segments that are tangent to a circle, and again, we did have two, and they're coming from the same external point and the external point in this instance is E, then that means that those segments are gonna be congruent. So sometimes in geometry or in math, you will see symbols that look like this called tick marks. Well, those tick marks tell you that those two sides will be congruent. And this type problem, they don't typically show the tick marks. So you just have to know that theorem that I just explained to you. When I am talking about the actual side name, which is segment DE, then I'm saying that it's congruent to segment BE. But because my problem is using the word solve, that means that I'm going to use an equal sign. So I'm simply going to substitute what is shown for segment DE, which is 4x minus 11, and set it equal to, because again, the tick marks aren't there, but that means if they're, those sides are congruent, they're also equal. So 4x minus 11 is equal to 2x plus 11. And what you're trying to do is solve for x so you can figure out whether or not this is true. All right, so this now becomes an algebra problem where you're combining your x's and you're combining your constants. So what I do to one side, I do to the other. And what I just did was I took the inverse of a positive 2x and I moved it over. So now I have 4x minus 2x, which is 2x minus 11 equals positive 11. Now x is still not by itself, so I want to take the inverse of negative 11, which is positive 11. And what I do to one side, I do to both. And simplify, 2x is equal to 11 plus 11, which is 22. x is still not by itself. So what's stopping it is that 2 that's in front of it. So 2 divided by 2 is one, and so I'm left with x is equal to 22 divided by two, which is 11, because remember, a fraction is simply a division problem. So technically, I'm finished because my directions asked me to solve, and that's what I did. When you solve, it's in the form of x equals something. However, let's say, for instance, the directions ask you to find the length of DE. So if I wanted to find DE, then I would just simply take segment DE and I would substitute instead of 4x, I said that it's 11. So I'm going to go ahead and put that 11 in there, minus 11. And if I wanted to find segment BE, I would use 2 times 11 plus 11. So I'm getting that information from my original equation, if you're wondering. And now I just um, simplify. So whenever you have a number next to a parenthesis, that tells you to multiply. So 4 times 11 is 44 minus 11. 2 times 11 is 22 plus 11. And 44 minus 11 is 33. 22 plus 11 is also 33. So that tells me that my answer for 11 is actually correct. If the directions ask me to find the side, the length of DE, then it would be 33. 
if they ask me to find the length of segment BE, it's also 33 because we said in the beginning that segment DE is congruent to segment BE, which means they're gonna equal each other. All right, so here's another example. This time, again, I'm solving for X. However, if I look at my radius and I try to find where there's a tangent line or segment, I only see one, I don't see two. So I can't use that same theorem that I was using a few minutes ago. What I typically tell students to do is locate the tangent that does intersect that radius. Go ahead and draw your right angle symbol because you're about to use your Pythagorean theorem. And this helps you to identify side C. That's important. So for A and B, it doesn't matter which one of the legs that you use, but you definitely need to know what C is. So the way the Pythagorean theorem works is you take A squared plus B squared, and it's set equal to C squared. So C squared does matter. You have to know the longest side of your right triangle. So what I'm gonna do now is substitute my information in. For A, I said it was 16. I am supposed to square that. B, I said it was X. And again, I square it. And then for C, now this might trip up some people, but just recall segment addition postulate, this part of the segment plus this part of the segment equals the entire segment. So segment addition. So the key word is I am adding. So I would just put a plus sign there. Otherwise, you're going to try to substitute C squared with 8X, and that will be incorrect. I personally am going to write it as X plus 8. And again, you have to square it. If you wanted to write 8 plus X, that's fine. All right, so now you simplify. 16 squared. 256 plus x squared. And whenever you have a quantity squared, that's simply asking you to multiply that by itself. So you're going to have the quantity of x plus 8 times another quantity of x plus 8. At this point, you know how to distribute. So that's what you're going to do. And your next step, you're going to simplify and you have 256 plus x squared equals x squared plus x times eight is eight x. Another eight times x is eight x. And then finally, eight times eight is positive 64. So make sure you're putting your signs in between. I can combine these x's. And so in the next step, that's what we'll do. 256 plus x squared equals x squared plus 16x plus 64. And now I'm trying to isolate x by itself. So the first thing I want to start with is subtracting x squared on both sides. When I do that, I recognize that my x squared term cancels out. So I no longer have x squared. I have 256 is equal to 16x plus 64. X is still not by itself. So what I want to do is start moving some things. So I'm going to move um, 64. To do that, I have to take the inverse. Since I already had a positive 64, I want to take the negative 64. 256 minus 64 is 192 equals 16X. Well, X is still not by itself. So in order to get it by itself, I have to divide it by what's stopping it from being by itself, which is 16. 16 divided by 16 is simply one. X is equal to 192 divided by 16, which is 12. Or if you're like me and you like to write the variable on the left-hand side, you can rewrite it. Technically, I am finished because it asked me in the direction to solve for X. So that's what I did. My answer will be in the form of variable equals something. But let's just verify that I'm on the right track. So in verifying that I'm on the right track, I want to go to my original problem. And so I have 16 squared plus, I want to replace that X with the 12 that I said that it's going to be squared. And then I replace this X plus eight 
squared, and now I simplify. Well, we already know 16 squared is 256. 12 times 12 is 144. And then 12 plus 8 is 20. 20 squared is 400. And now we have to check to see, is that true? Does 256 plus 144 equal 400? Yes, it does. So if it is balanced as it is, that means that your answer is correct. Good job. All right, so let's look at when we have to use the Pythagorean theorem to determine whether or not the line, well, it says line, but uh, it's really a segment. So we're gonna change that to segment. Matter of fact, I'm just gonna use the symbol. All right, so determine if segment AB is tangent to the circle. So in the first two examples, we look for the radius and we look for the tangent line. And I said, go ahead and put your right angle symbol there, which is what we're going to do. Now, in this case, it is not guaranteed that that is truly a right angle. The whole purpose of me suggesting that you do this is so that you can look across from it to identify C, because we're going to use the Pythagorean theorem. A and B, again, it doesn't matter which leg that you use, it's fine. So A squared plus B squared equals C squared. I'm simply substituting. A, we said was 15.4 square plus B is 7.2 square and C is 17 squared. So pull out that calculator and let's see what we got. 15.4 squared is simply 15.4 times itself, which is 237.16. 7.2 squared is 7.2 times itself, which is 51.84. And 17 squared is 289. So now let's simplify, complete the math and see whether or not it is true. So yes, 289 is equal to 289. So therefore my equation balanced, which means that segment AB is in fact tangent. So you just proved that it was tangent. That's your answer based off of what the directions ask. Okay, let's do one more. And it's just like that one that we just did. So you're trying to determine whether or not segment AB is tangent to the circle. So the first thing you wanna look for is your radius. So I know I have two, but if I look at this one, I don't see that I have a tangent line. So I'm not even paying attention to that particular radius. But if I look at this one, I see that I have a tangent line and that's what I'm trying to prove. Well, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm trying to prove if it's tangent. So based off of what I see there, that's what I'm going to assume for now. I have to prove it. Just because I put that right angle does not mean it is true. I am just doing it for the purpose of identifying side C. That's my only reason. So don't get it in your head that that's automatically a right angle. It's not. All right, I'm going to label A and B because again, I am trying to um, do Pythagorean theorem which is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Now, if you're not paying attention, you will miss something here. So what you need to know about side C is always the longest side of your right triangle. Well, some people look at it and say, well, I can't tell which side is the longest side. That's why you have to pay attention to the number. Which one of the numbers is the biggest? So your biggest number is your telltale sign. That's going to be side C. Well, looking at this, it looks like side C, if you didn't know any better, was just six. Well, that can't be true because this side by itself is 11. And we know that six is not bigger than 11. So what you have to recall is your rule for a radius. So no matter where the radius is in the circle, if you're given a length for one radius, it's the same for all of them. So since I have two radii, then what I would do is I would replace, well, not even replace, they didn't have anything there. So you would just go ahead and label that that's also nine. 
Okay. Yeah, that's also nine. And now you have to also remember what I just said a few minutes ago about segment addition postulate. This segment plus this segment equals the entire segment. Segment addition. When I say the word addition, that should tell you you're using a plus sign. You are not multiplying. That's a common error. Okay, so now I'm going to substitute. I know that A is 11 and I have to square it. B is 9 and I have to square it. And C, we just determined is 6 plus 9, which is 15. And again, I have to square it. Simplified, 11 squared is 121. 9 squared is 81 and 15 squared is 225. So what I wanna do is see if this is in fact true. Does 121 plus 81 equal 225? When I put it in a calculator, it says no, it equals 202. So therefore I know that segment AB is not tangent. So I would go back and I would erase that or me, I mean, you don't have to. I would go back and I would erase that 90 degree angle symbol because it's not true. This is not a right triangle. So if this was helpful at all, please like and subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.